my name is uh, Ben Harrington. I'm, I'm a major in the Australian Army. I've been in the Army for 25 years. Uh, I feel very fortunate to have the career that I've had. Uh, I've graduated from the Australian Defence Force Academy uh, with electrical engineering. Uh, I've graduated from the Royal Military College as a commissioned officer. I've also had the chance to do Masters of Engineering over in England. Uh, I've travelled Australia, I've travelled the world, uh, all thanks to the opportunities of STEM. Uh, of engineering and, and the Defence Force. So I feel like uh, I've had a great career and I love sharing my story uh, with, with others. Soft skills are, are absolutely paramount in, in the future workforce. It, it's so important to defence uh, and to wider Australian industry. You look at uh, studies and projections of future workforces, such as by the year 2030, 90% uh, of jobs will be STEM related. Uh, and that's true. Uh, but I'll tell you the other 10% and overlaid with that 90%, uh, will be an important uh, uh, reliance on the soft skills. And we're talking the leadership, the management, the communication, uh, morale, uh, integrating teams, uh, and, and other soft skills like counselling and the like. These are all so important to be able to bring people together. Uh, so much of what we have today is we're going to automate and, and, and therefore uh, STEM is going to be a large player in the future of, of that automation. Uh, but it's the soft skills that's going to harness all that activity uh, it's so important in defence. We uh, we value leadership very highly. Uh, all of our officers have their leadership training, whether it's at the Australian Defence Force Academy or other officer training establishments. Uh, but even in our soldiers, uh, our sailors and our airmen and women, uh, they all have that leadership training. They're all trained to be part of teams, uh, to be able to collaborate, work together, uh, work as part of team of teams, and that, that's how you get good results. It's also part of that diversity of thought to be able to harness uh, different ideas from different members of the team to be able to get uh, uh, great results. It's important for Australia's defence capability and it's, and it's important for Australia's future. Uh, I've been asked about the skill shortages that's facing Australia and this gives me great concern when, I, when we look at the futures of, uh, of high school students graduating. We've seen a steady decline in percentages of Australian high school students graduating in, in the subjects that we need for STEM uh, and I'm talking engineering specifically. So when you're talking physics uh, and maths, and chemistry, uh, we've seen a reduction of about 25% over the last decade of school students graduating with the kind of enabling subjects we need to study engineering. And that, that's a great concern. It's a great concern to defence because we are a large uh, user of STEM. Uh, we're a very advanced uh, defence force across our Navy, Army and Air Force. Uh, you look back on the defence force 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago today, we are continually evolving. We have a great need and demand for STEM. Uh, when you look at the future of cyber warfare, uh, standoff, uh, standoff warfare, uh, unmanned drones, uh, unmanned aerial vehicles and the like, uh, we have a great reliance on having STEM-enabled people. Over 40% of Defence's workforce is STEM-enabled and that's just going to keep growing. So as high school students, uh, if they're not taking the right subjects, they're not able to come in uh, to defence or to our universities and study the, the courses that we need to be able to have the kinds of capabilities and technologies we need into the future. So we're doing what we can to get out promoting STEM. I go to schools and universities uh, as young as possible to say uh, how important STEM is both for defence and for Australian industry to grow that, uh, to enable people to have uh, fulfilling careers uh, and to be able to have the sort of uh, capabilities, technology we need in, in today's defence force. Um, so we talk about the future of workforce. Uh, future workforces, uh, defence historically, uh, I think has been quite hierarchical and, and fairly inflexible, but we're getting so much more flexible. Uh, you know, easy things like maternity leave, paternity leave, uh, bereavement leave, all those sort of things we're, we're well and truly ahead of. And in fact, I think we're a bit of a defence uh, so in industry leader in that regard. Uh, but you look at things like total workforce model, where defence is now able to collaborate with an industry employer and we uh, have them for two days a week and industry has them for three days a week and we have a collaborative uh, workforce uh, to, to employ that person. And, and it's a win-win where Defence is able to leverage off the skills and, and attitude and, and knowledge that they get from Defence industry uh, and Defence industry is able to leverage off our training uh, and, uh, and workforce. So uh, that's fantastic. We have full-time uh, regular across Army, Navy and Air Force and we have our reserves and people can transition out of full-time into part-time uh, into the civilian workforce and back again. So we're certainly getting more flexible in that, uh, being able to uh, accommodate varying careers uh, with family, children, uh, and, and travel and the like. So uh, a flexible workforce is, is paramount, and uh, so is an enabled workforce in, in STEM.